schooling in Edinburgh. At the age of 10, James was sent to Edinburgh Academy, a prestigious school where he faced the challenges of fitting in. His country accent and unusual curiosity made him a target for teasing. Other boys mocked him, calling him dafty for his relentless questioning. But James was undeterred. He was fascinated with geometry, optics, and mechanics. Rather than playing games, he preferred drawing complicated diagrams with a compass and ruler. His teachers quickly noticed his unusual talent, even though his handwriting was messy and his methods unconventional. One day, while other students were distracted, James astonished his teacher by producing a geometric construction that solved a difficult problem in a way no one had expected. This was the beginning of a lifelong pattern. Maxwell approached problems from fresh angles, seeing truths others overlooked. Outside of school, he began exploring color-mixing experiments with homemade devices. His father supported him, though he was still cautious about his son's future. James's early notebooks revealed a remarkable ability to think abstractly, linking mathematics with real-world phenomena. Although school was not easy socially, Maxwell's intellectual gifts made him stand out. By the time he was 14, his scientific paper on oval curves showed his deep originality. This paper would mark the transition from gifted child to recognized young scientist. The boy who had once been mocked was now quietly earning respect in the world of learning. His journey toward greatness had begun. Childhood interests and first ventures. Michael Dell's childhood was a fertile ground for experimentation and exploration. By the time he was 10, he had developed a particular fascination with electronics and machines. Simple devices like radios, telephones, and even small household appliances became subjects of investigation. Michael's curiosity often led him to disassemble and reassemble these gadgets, learning the principles of circuitry and mechanics firsthand. At 12, he started taking on small business ventures, which revealed his entrepreneurial instincts. He sold newspaper subscriptions, delivered newspapers, and even bought broken electronics, repaired them, and sold them for profit. These early endeavors taught him lessons about risk, customer service, and the importance of understanding supply and demand. Unlike other kids, Michael saw opportunities where others saw obstacles. His interest in computers intensified after he encountered the early personal computers of the late 1970s. Michael saw the potential of computers not just as tools for calculation, but as instruments of communication and innovation. He began learning programming, spending hours experimenting with software and hardware alike. By high school, he was already running small ventures involving computer equipment, selling used parts, and offering repair services to classmates and local businesses. University years in Edinburgh. At just 16 years old, Maxwell entered the University of Edinburgh where he continued his studies in philosophy, mathematics, and natural sciences. Unlike most students, James had a burning curiosity that drove him to learn beyond the curriculum. He spent much of his time in the university's laboratory, experimenting with light and optics. He studied with eminent professors like James Forbes and William Gregory, who recognized his unique mind. Maxwell was especially captivated by the nature of light and color laying the foundation for one of his greatest contributions to physics. During these years, Maxwell built devices to study the properties of polarized light. He also read widely, absorbing knowledge from ancient Greek philosophers to modern mathematicians. He became known for asking questions that went deeper than anyone expected, seeking the why behind every natural phenomenon. At home in Glenlair, he worked on improving his experiments. He enjoyed simple pleasures too, horse riding, drawing, and poetry. James was not only a scientist, but also a gifted writer with a love for humor and verse. Despite his brilliance, Maxwell remained humble, often attributing his insights to persistence rather than genius. By the age of 18, he had already laid the foundation for scientific breakthroughs that would change the world. His next step would take him to Cambridge University the heart of British mathematics. Cambridge and the turning point. In 1850, Maxwell moved to Cambridge University, enrolling first at Peterhouse, but later transferring to Trinity College, which better suited his ambitions. 
Cambridge was the intellectual hub of Britain, and here James would refine his genius. The mathematical tripos, Cambridge's grueling examination system, was the ultimate test of a student's ability. Maxwell threw himself into study, mastering not only mathematics but also philosophy and physics. He was deeply influenced by William Wool's philosophy of science, which stressed finding unifying principles in nature. At Cambridge, Maxwell formed friendships with fellow students who would later become leading scientists. His sense of humor and love of poetry made him well-liked, despite his eccentricities. He was often seen sketching diagrams on scraps of paper, muttering about patterns of nature. In 1854, Maxwell graduated as second wrangler, second highest score in mathematics, and won the prestigious Smith Prize for mathematical excellence. But more importantly, he was already thinking about problems far beyond ordinary mathematics. During these years, Maxwell began considering how electricity and magnetism might be connected, a daring thought that would eventually lead to one of the greatest theories in science. Leaving Cambridge, he was no longer just a brilliant student. He was a scientist poised to change the course of physics forever. The color vision breakthrough. While still a young scholar, Maxwell turned his attention to one of the most mysterious subjects of the time, human color vision. Building upon the ideas of Thomas Young, Maxwell proposed that the eye perceives color through three types of receptors, each sensitive to red, green, or blue light. To test his theory, he designed ingenious experiments using spinning color wheels and prisms. By combining colored filters and adjusting proportions, he demonstrated that all visible colors could be reproduced from just three primary colors. This became known as the trichromatic theory of vision. His most stunning demonstration came in 1861 when Maxwell created the world's first color photograph. He projected three separate black and white images taken through red, green, and blue filters and combined them into a single full-color image. The result amazed audiences. It was a groundbreaking moment in both physics and photography. Maxwell's work on color not only revolutionized the science of vision, but also laid the foundation for modern color reproduction in photography, cinema, and digital screens. This achievement reflected Maxwell's unique genius. He could bridge pure mathematics with experimental science, creating practical demonstrations that revealed deep truths about nature. Color, once a matter of art and mystery, had become a scientifically explained phenomenon thanks to his brilliance. Early teaching in Saturn's rings. After Cambridge, Maxwell accepted a teaching post at Marischal College in Aberdeen in 1856. It was here that he made another remarkable discovery. The planet Saturn, with its dazzling rings, had long puzzled astronomers. Were the rings solid, liquid, or made of particles? Maxwell approached the problem mathematically. Using the laws of mechanics, he demonstrated that Saturn's rings could not be solid or liquid. Instead, they had to be composed of countless small particles orbiting in harmony. His conclusion, published in 1859 as the Adams Prize Essay, was later confirmed by astronomical observations and spacecraft centuries later. At Aberdeen, Maxwell proved himself not only as a theorist but also as a teacher. His lectures, though complex, inspired students to think beyond textbooks. However, life at Aberdeen was not without challenge. When Marischal merged with another college, he lost his position. Despite this setback, Maxwell continued his research, preparing for greater discoveries ahead. His work on Saturn showed his ability to solve mysteries others thought impossible, earning him growing respect across Europe. The young Scottish professor was on his way to becoming one of the greatest minds of the 19th century. Marriage and Personal Life In 1858, while working in Aberdeen, Maxwell met Catherine Mary Dewar, the daughter of the college principal. Catherine was intelligent, well-educated, and shared Maxwell's love for science and faith. The two quickly formed a deep bond. In 1859, they were married. Their marriage was one of companionship and intellectual partnership. Catherine often assisted James in his experiments, helping him prepare equipment and record results. The couple lived modestly but happily 
dividing their time between Aberdeen, London, and their Glenlair estate. Unlike many great scientists who became isolated in their work, Maxwell remained warm, humorous, and deeply connected to those around him. He wrote playful poems, enjoyed music, and valued his friendships. His Christian faith also shaped his worldview, giving him a sense of wonder about the harmony of creation. Though they had no children, James and Catherine shared a fulfilling life, filled with both intellectual pursuit and quiet domestic joy. Catherine was his constant supporter during his busiest and most difficult years, standing by him when his health began to decline. This personal stability allowed Maxwell to focus on his scientific pursuits with even greater dedication, leading him toward the crowning achievement of his career, the unification of electricity and magnetism. Electromagnetism, a grand vision. By the early 1860s, Maxwell turned his focus to the mystery of electricity and magnetism. Scientists like Michael Faraday had shown that electric and magnetic forces were deeply connected, but no one had yet found the mathematical laws uniting them. Maxwell took on this challenge. Using mathematics, he described how electric and magnetic fields interact in space. He introduced the revolutionary idea that light itself was an electromagnetic wave, a vibration of electric and magnetic fields traveling through space. In 1864, he presented his equations to the Royal Society of London. These Maxwell's equations unified electricity, magnetism, and optics into a single theory of electromagnetism. It was a breathtaking achievement, compared in importance to Newton's laws of motion. His work implied that radio waves, microwaves, and other unseen forms of light must exist, though they had not yet been discovered. Decades later, Heinrich Hertz confirmed these predictions, and the modern world of wireless communication was born. Maxwell's equations would become the foundation of electrical engineering, telecommunications, and modern physics. They also paved the way for Einstein's theory of relativity, which built upon Maxwell's framework. This unification of forces was Maxwell's greatest gift to humanity, a demonstration that the universe was governed by elegant, universal laws. King's College and Recognition. In 1860, Maxwell became a professor of natural philosophy at King's College, London, one of the most prestigious positions in British science. Here, he continued refining his theories and conducting experiments. At King's, Maxwell was at the height of his career. His lectures attracted not only students, but also scientists from across Europe. Though some found his delivery challenging, his insights were revolutionary. It was during this time that he produced his most famous papers on electromagnetism, establishing himself as one of the greatest scientists of his age. Yet Maxwell remained modest, often crediting the experimental genius of Faraday as the inspiration for his work. Recognition soon followed. He was elected a fellow of the Royal Society and received numerous scientific honors. Despite his fame, Maxwell shunned public attention, preferring quiet study and the countryside life with Catherine. His years at King's marked the consolidation of his reputation. He was no longer the young prodigy from Scotland. He was now recognized as a scientific giant, standing alongside Newton and Faraday in the pantheon of great British scientists. But his journey was far from over. A new chapter awaited, one that would see Maxwell apply his genius to the organization of science itself directing the Cavendish Laboratory. In 1871, Maxwell was appointed the first professor of experimental physics at the University of Cambridge and tasked with directing the newly established Cavendish Laboratory. This laboratory would become a world center of physics research, shaping the future of science. Maxwell carefully designed the laboratory to provide young scientists with the best tools and guidance. He emphasized precision in measurement and clarity in theory, setting a high standard for experimental physics. As director, he supervised research into electrical standards, laying the groundwork for future discoveries in electricity and energy. His leadership style was gentle yet firm. He inspired rather than commanded, encouraging students to think independently. Under his guidance, the Cavendish Laboratory became a model for scientific research 
producing great discoveries long after Maxwell's death, including J.J. Thompson's identification of the electron. Though administrative work consumed much of his time, Maxwell never lost his passion for personal research. He continued studying the kinetic theory of gases, developing statistical methods that anticipated modern physics. His years at the Cavendish crowned his career. Maxwell was no longer just an individual genius. He had become a builder of institutions, shaping the very framework of modern science. Final years and illness. By the mid-1870s, Maxwell's health began to decline. He suffered from abdominal cancer, the same disease that had taken his mother when he was a child. Despite worsening pain, he continued his teaching and research with unwavering dedication. Maxwell and Catherine spent much of their time at Glenlair, where he found peace in the countryside he had loved since boyhood. He still wrote poetry, tended to simple farm tasks, and welcomed visits from friends and students. In 1879, his condition worsened. Though doctors tried to help, there was little they could do. At just 48 years old, James Clerk Maxwell passed away on November 5, 1879. His death was mourned deeply across the scientific world. Colleagues compared the loss to that of Newton centuries earlier. They knew that Maxwell had revealed truths about nature that would guide science for generations to come. Maxwell left behind not only equations and theories, but also a legacy of humility, kindness, and inspiration. Catherine, who had been his constant companion, preserved his memory with dignity and grace. His life was short, but his impact was eternal. Legacy of a Genius James Clerk Maxwell's work reshaped the world. His equations unified electricity, magnetism, and light into a single framework, forming the backbone of modern physics. Without Maxwell, there would be no radio, no television, no Wi-Fi, no modern electronics. Einstein himself once said, the work of James Clerk Maxwell changed the world forever. Einstein's theory of relativity was built upon Maxwell's equations, and quantum mechanics also drew upon his insights. Beyond physics, Maxwell's theories of color vision transformed photography, art, and modern display technology. His work on gases laid the foundation for statistical mechanics. His leadership at the Cavendish Laboratory created a research tradition that produced many Nobel Prize winners. But Maxwell's legacy is not only scientific. He is remembered as a gentle, humorous, and humble man who combined deep faith with profound intellect. Unlike many geniuses, he inspired affection as well as admiration. Today, Maxwell's name stands alongside Newton, Einstein, and Galileo as one of the greatest minds in history. His equations are inscribed in laboratories, his discoveries embedded in every modern device. The boy once mocked as dafty, in school became one of the brightest lights in the history of science. James Clerk Maxwell's life was short, but his genius was infinite.